Welcome to another video from Doc Lock. Okay, so I'm just going to put one thing away on my bench. There we go, throw a screwdriver away. If every video I do, I just put one thing away, eventually my bench is going to be clean. That's my theory anyway. Alright, looking at the Ross Lock, Ross Safe Locks, or sorry, Ross 600 Safe Lock. So this is branded 600 AL, quantity 1. Um, this is a six lever lock suitable for gun safes and things like this. This is an Australian brand as well, as you can tell by the little Skippy the Kangaroo logo on the side. And they're pretty, pretty cool locks. These particular locks, um, one of the reasons I like them so much is that you can just weld them into place. Secondly, they have a hardened plate um, in between the lock and the door. Uh, thirdly, they've got levers which have anti-pick, like little teeth on them. Uh, they can't, they are pickable, but they are pretty pretty hard as well. Uh, rebuilding them and all that sort of stuff, the sim simple design makes it, you know, what I like about it. They use them on all the safes around, uh, you know, when you buy a safe from an, an Australian manufacturer like um, CMI, you'll, you'll get a Ross on there. So they're really, really well known and really well respected in our industry. Alright, welding instructions. Locate the spring clamp over with lock. Locate and spring clamp over with lock attached to inside a safe surface. Do not screw clamp. Keyhole insert or keyhole profile should be ground flush to door surface to allow lock removal for a servicing. Sounds over technical to me. Reverse handing of the lock. With the lock in the unlock mode, remove lever housing and the bolt lever assembly from the lock case. Uh, dismantle lock lever pack. Lay, the layout, lay out the levers. Note that the next to the bolt must be replaced in the same position when reassembling reverse bolt to the opposite handing and reassemble in the in the unlocked mode all right so you can do all that or you could just buy the the one you want generally it's not that big a deal all right let's have a look at the lock so there we have it there we have our keys so here is where your hardened plating would go yeah, it's, a, it's an optional extra. Uh, the keys you get two keys you can also get longer keys so if you've got a thicker door than this um, you know you just basically order the keys with the length you want, we'll cut it, and then you'll be good to go. If you look at this and you were to say there's a 10 mil door on the front there, you'd, you'd about width of my finger, you'd be saying that you're not really left with much key length. So that's the idea behind having extended keys. Some of these keys can get really long, like really long, just depending on how thick the door is. So we've got two positions with this uh, with this key right here. Should be able to do both, there we go. Hard to get in, there's one. And then we could do the vertical one as well just like that. So you put the key in and I'm turning it uh, from 6 o'clock position to 3 o'clock position now, I'm turning it up to the 12 o'clock position now, I'm at the 12, and I'm turning it over to the 9 o'clock position, I feel all the levers have lifted and put the bolt into the extended section which means that the bolt has been fully thrown and the levers have resunk back down which means this should now be solid. And then I can rotate another quarter of a degree down 6 o'clock position and remove the key. So pretty cool, pretty funky, uh, they all used to be made out of brass. So we should take a little bit of a look. I think we should a flat blade screwdriver because flat blades are so like yesterday but we'll use flat blade on this. I'm guessing safes probably still use a lot of flat blade for certain things. I guess it's an old school tradition or maybe they've just got so many flat blade screws left that they've got to get rid of them, who knows. Alright, so we've got two positions here, depending on how this is configured. That is basically the hole for the uh, for the key tip to come through. And this is your case that you can weld on. So what they were talking about grinding flat is that you, if you are going to weld it on, you don't want any crap on the inside of here, because this lock, the way it's designed, is it's designed so you can just slide it in, put the two screws in and use it. And when you when you want to service it or change combo, you just slide it straight out. And that, that's a pretty cool method of doing it. So as you can see down there, three and three on either side with a bolt throw. And yeah, it looks like the bolt is now is now made of uh... okay we should be good. oh hang on maybe it's got it in a locked position all right now we should be able to remove this plate now unless it's pressed on there what has changed this should just be pulling apart this should just be pulling apart Okay, it's extremely tight. Extremely tight to pull it apart. Normally, you just do it with your hands. Different, uh, maybe they're using different machinery these days. Who knows? Yep, 
There is one. That is a tight case. Super tight. All right, there we go. There's that plate off. There's our lever. And just for the hell of it, let's uh, let's lay out the levers. Okay, number one, number two, number three, bolt throw. Okay, and then we will go from this position, that one, that one, and that one. So we have to remember that order. So with these uh, locks, they're not like other mortise locks where you've got one side of the key and then you flip it over and it's the same combination on the other side of the key. Generally, it doesn't really work that way. Um, all of these can be independent, independent levers, independent cuts. See, they're all different. And there is your bolt like that. Boom, boom. So what they're saying is if you want to reverse it, you can go in that, like that and reverse it for different handing. But we're not going to do that. I'm just going to reassemble it. So putting in our lever there, bang. Uh, these are the anti-pick, I'll show, show you in a second, when I just put this back, but that's there. I don't know if you can see this, but you see these little uh, teeth here, little teeth? They're the anti-pick, and they are quite quite a hard lock to actually pick. I think I've only picked one or two in my, in my time with the right tool, and I don't have the right tool anymore, so no, I don't pick them anymore. But if you know anybody who's really good at lock picking, there's a few people on YouTube, I challenge them to the Ross 600 and the Ross 700. Ross 700, preferably. That's a hell of a good lock. Okay, so we're just popping this back in here. Oh, lost a lever. Oh, lost another one. So there's our case, let's put this on, and our bolt throw is on that side because I've got this hole down here. Go in, go in, okay. Extremely tighter cases than what they used to be, I can tell you that much. Oh, i got to get a hammer to put that on. Get in there. Ow. A lot of pressure. All right, and flipping the bolt, there we have it. Locked, unlocked, and done. So the only thing left to do now is just pop these two screws back on there to hold it all together. The secret source of the flat bladed screws. Bang, and bang, and then we have it. The Ross 600 AL dismantled, put back, showed you how to um, do the handing if you needed to, and also order that hardened plate if you're going to put it on. It just means when if somebody's going to attack and drill through your lock um, before they can get to any of the levers or the parts, they're going to go through an armor plating. It makes it even harder. Leave your comments down below, available from our lock shop. Just go to safe, safe locks, you'll find this, and leave your comment. Thanks for watching.